Hello, I'm Tim Clark, and welcome to CVG's Call of Duty Ghosts E3 Instant Reaction video. I'm joined by Leon Hurley from the official PlayStation magazine. Hello. Uh, Matt Elliott, also from CVG. Hi. Boys, what did you make of it? Leon, you've already been out to see Call of Duty Ghosts at Infinity Ward. Yeah, so I went out to see um, the pre-reveal event from the uh, the Xbox One um, show. So I saw the uh, in the deep, I saw a lot of tech demos um, showing off their kind of shiny next-gen lighting and stuff. Um, I still to see anything that sort of isn't doesn't feel like it's another COD. I don't mean that in a bad way. These are always good games, but they're making out like it's some huge paradigm shift in the series, and it looks like more COD. I, well, I saw a, <laughs> the whole show was interesting because I've been saying for a couple of years now that I'm surprised that more software publishers don't just almost sidestep E3 and go direct to the public and beam footage of their new games straight to them in that kind of extended here's a load of gameplay sort of way. And this this was them doing. Well, this was one of the most high-profile examples of that. Mm. And in that Into the Deep, uh, which was the first of two levels they showed off, they had uh, Twitter people coming up on the bottom left of the screen with their opinions. And one of them was saying, oh, amazing next-gen fish, look how they moved away from the, uh, the scuba men. I couldn't tell if they were joking or not. I think that maybe they were. Well, this, it, it's, not things that, it's one of the things they kept mentioning when they were showing it to me, going, oh, the fish have got their own AI. They seem to be really proud that the fish have their own AI and will react to you as you swim close. And it seemed odd that someone was tweeting exactly mm. the thing that developers talk about. Some, <laughs> some of those accounts I looked like, not wanting to cast aspersions, but it did seem to have like an oddly low number of followers and, and tweets, but um, I'm sure mm. they were kosher. Matt, what did you make of the Into the Deep stuff, the, the scuba bit? You said it was like James Bond? Uh, it's very, like Bond. slightly like James Bond. Yeah, if I'm honest, I was probably more excited by what we saw in No Man's Land. But the it, it was it, it looked nice, it looked lovely, and the, the sort of the combat stuff sort of felt a little bit kind of sort of staccato. It came and it went. I didn't really get any kind of sense of it being sort of like, you know, if you miss, you were going to fail. Um, I mean, it felt like, it felt like to me, like an underseas version, a Finding Nemo version of the all gillied up level, where yeah. you had, you know, a kind of a, a man with quite a serious voice in your ear telling you to move mm. up and take a guy out. And so, in, in the sense of it being like a another card, I, mm. I, I definitely can see what you guys mean. I mean, it's tough to make, it's tough to be too judgmental about what you saw from, you know, the visuals or the sort of technical side of things, because we're watching, you know, on a stream and you get kind of quite a lot of digital break on that. It's a bit like playing on live. Um, but were you impressed by kind of what you saw, Leon? I think it's, it's hard to judge with that sort of things. Like if you watch someone play all gillied up, it would just be a man walking around for a while. But when you play, it's like it's like hmm. one of the most amazing sort of that one level is better than most right, video games that. in their entirety. And I think in that sense, it's quite brave actually that they chose that level as the, the first one that they show people because all gillied up is a thing that a lot of people hark back to as kind of saying COD is, is no longer dynamic, it's all just one note, like Eiffel Tower's yeah. falling over from start mm. to finish. Like, the moment you said that, I'm kind of more excited about it than perhaps I was looking at it. Looking at it, I think this looks a little bit boring, but if that's the kind of calm bit before... But in terms of raw, I mean, if we're going to be, if we're going to be like, brutal about this, in terms of, like, raw visual juice, which is a thing, it didn't look <laughs> like, uh, it's a disgusting thing, it didn't look uh, <laughs> vastly different to, you know, if you're playing Far Cry 3 or Bioshock Infinite on a, on a, on a decent on a PC now, or certainly yeah. Crisis, Crisis yeah. 3. I think on, on the PC side of it, yeah, it doesn't look like a, a huge advancement, but I guess for, for consoles, especially like eight-year-old consoles that haven't updated their hardware, you know, obviously in their whole life cycle, it does look like a, a leap forward. And I suppose mm. that's the element, and I think we're going to talk a lot about this over E3 with games that are coming to current-gen consoles and next-gen consoles. You're going to get that kind of the Venn diagram bit where they've had to kind of they've had to overlap to, 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 for the, the same kind of assets to be yeah. coming out on um, two different systems. But if you did want something brand new, you got it later on with the second level, which was called No Man's Land, and that was called No Man's Land because it featured a the, dog. The dog, dog. yeah. Riley, <laughs> Riley, Riley the dog. <laughs> <laughs> what what do you make of Riley as a as a name? I've got a dog called Batman. I think Riley's a less cool name than Batman. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, the dog's an interesting idea. I'm not sure, like, when they showed you um, controlling him, it just made me think of, like, it's like the spider, robot spider in Black Ops 2. It's, it's an like odd... a furry missile, like a furry yeah. drone yeah. missile. Yeah, and it looked like there was a press X to bark kind of thing. He barked a couple of times. You're hoping there's a press I'm X hoping, to bark. I'm hoping, yeah. Do you just, think you can the... unlock the dog Jasons? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if there's a bark button, that's basically the only button I'm pressing. You, you, the, dog, uh, the dog jumped through the window, I thought it was a nice animation, and then mm. seemed to barrel four people out the door, and then you have one of those... Um, like the, the siege break moments, yeah, mm. the breach. Yeah. That's the right word for it. Brilliant, ridiculous. I'm, I'm not sure. I like the, you know, the, the four people being chased. Ridiculous. The, yeah. the, the funny thing in the presentation was they're going, oh yeah, because the, the, you always have to, you always have to kind of pay fealty to the community. And they're going, oh, we love, we love what the community have done with the dog. But surely, like the meme has been like people joking about yeah, it. Yeah, people have done terrible things with that dog. Yeah. <laughs> 
I thought the dog looked cool though. I'd, I'd be, uh, do, do you think? Obviously, it's not a spoiler because we don't know what, what happens. But we we watching it all felt certain that either the dog or his handler will get get the bullet. By Absolutely, the end of this yeah. Cool yeah it's like, like Team Ico kind of games, isn't it? Once you've introduced two characters, one or t'other is, is mm. not going to see the credits. The only alternative that, that we thought maybe was that like the, the last section, you know, the slow mo bit where they they roll the gun across the floor to you. Maybe that's when you'll be you'll be just in charge of, charge of the dog. The dog will be the only one left. No, I tell you what. What will happen is the dog will somehow be apparently killed in an explosion or a, a <laughs> yeah. truck rolling off a cliff <laughs> yeah. or something, and then right at the end when it looks like you're about to get killed, there you go, come kids. out. Don't bother playing Call of Duty, you guys. Leon's told you what's going to happen. He'll come leaping out of the smoke and like '80s action style, grab the guy's gun. Yeah, or take a bullet for you. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, good. Good. <laughs> I'd like it if just just the dog survives. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's the yeah. dog, uh, the dog walking to the uh, sunset. But just before we wrap up, I wonder if the interesting thing is what we didn't see really. Like the game, as I understand it, is set ten years. Is it after summer? Well, they said climactic ten, event. They said mm. ten years later on the trailer. But I know when I interviewed um, Zach Volker, the lead animator, he said that um, the the player and his brother have grown up in this world, and it's sort of it's all they've ever known. So mm. it, the implication is that these two grown men. Who, ten. All their kids, well, yeah. All, yeah. yeah. yeah all the, you know, they were very young when it happened, but supposedly they, all they've ever known is this kind of ruined post-apocalyptic America, mm. or, or this sort of fallen on hard times America. So, but why is America fallen on hard times? They keep talking about this as being a like a mass event. I think was what um, Mark Rubin called it, some kind of unspecified mass event that somehow it looks ruined environmental, the, doesn't it? Yeah, well, there's some concept art and some um, bits in one of the trailers that look like something's crashing down, possibly meteors. Well, it, that was it. Yeah, I thought in the trailer you saw red, fiery meteors or something, mm. something similar yeah. streaking down from the sky. And then in the the second level, we saw uh, in the the live show. It appeared they were circling a huge crater, didn't mm. they? And there were guys in hazmat suits and And also in the trailer mm. at the end, every time it showed like a sort of where the ghosts were operating, it showed the logo sort of slam into the map and there's like a little puff of impact sort of dust. Don't you think meteors suggest Day of the Triffids? I think huge giant plants, that's why we haven't yeah. seen much of the enemies, they're gonna come stuttering out of the undergrowth. <laughs> Well, the enemies, sorry, enemies, that's what it is. The enemies yeah, amazing, we saw yeah. were, were wandering around with, with um, hazmat suits and sort of Geiger counters. It looked like there was some kind of contamination or something. That was Those being... were plant detectors, Leon. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's a thing. That's a thing now, yes. <laughs> so, yeah, I think a uh, partial approval for <laughs> the Call of Duty Ghost Reveal. Uh, we'll be back all through the week of E3, a rotating cast of uh, experts, I'm going to say, uh, to talk about the big games of the show and uh, what the different console manufacturers have revealed. So don't forget to hit subscribe if you want to see some more of that good stuff.